This is a sewing tutorial for wind instrument bell covers. I am Alyssa with Jarris Custom Clothing. I am also a band director. I am not a medical professional and I have not tested the efficacy of these bell covers, but this is my best interpretation of what the current research dictates for bell covers. So the finished product looked a little bit like a shower cap, but this is a three layer system. There's an inner filter layer of non-woven polypropylene sandwiched between two outer layers of woven fabric. Each bell cover requires elastic around the circumference of the finished cover so that it can snugly attach to the instrument without causing harm to the finish. For the filter layer, I purchased fabric online that was specifically advertised as filter material for reusable face masks, so it can be washed. This stuff looks very similar to non-fusible interfacing or sew-in interfacing, and you certainly could try substituting that instead. The outer fabric can be uh, quilting cotton. In the center picture, I used a bed sheet, which seemed to work very well. Whatever you're using, you want to make sure that it does not have stretch to it. The first step is cutting out your filter circles. Your sewist is going to make a pattern using the chart below to find the size circle required for each size grouping. Now, I utilized my instrumental inventory in making these sizes, and yours might vary a little bit because different manufacturers, of course, have different specifications. Please note that the filter material has to be the full width of the bell. So if you have the instrument you're trying to make a cover for, you can just make the pattern from the bell of that instrument. Otherwise, you can use a compass or a circular household object of the correct size. Please measure carefully. Again, it's okay to be a little bit bigger, but you don't want it to be smaller. The example I have in the lower right hand corner picture, I used with my salad plates because they were just the right size for this trombone um, circle. Remember these measurements are diameter and not radius, and you're gonna cut one circle of filter material for each bell cover. The next step is to cut out your exterior circles. You're gonna again make a pattern in the same way you did for the filter circles, but these circles, of course, are larger because this is intended to wrap around the edge of the bell. Consider folding the material in half so you can cut two at a time. If you're working with a particularly thick material, consider balancing it with a thinner one for the other side. Remember that these measurements, again, are diameter and not radius. Cut two of the exterior circles for each bell cover. Step three is to anchor your filter material in the center of one of the exterior circles. So find its spot and pin it down. Then stitch around the filter circle using either a straight stitch or a zigzag close to the edge of the filter material so it doesn't flop around and it stays in place when the bell cover is washed. Is finishing the outer edge. If you've got a regular machine, you're gonna do this a lot like a pillowcase. So start by pinning both exterior circles together with the right sides facing each other. One of the circles will already have the filter material attached. Second, you're gonna stitch around the outside circumference at a quarter inch seam allowance with a fairly small stitch so that it's nice and durable. Make sure you leave a short span open for turning. Quarter inch seam allowance is really simple on most machines. You're just gonna align the outside edge of the material with the outside edge of your sewing machine foot. Next, you're going to turn the cover right side out and fold in the exposed edge and stitch it closed. If you're going to use the elastic casing method, don't close it just yet. Wait until after that step. You'll see that in the following step. If you happen to have a serger, this is much faster. You can start by pinning the together both exterior circles with the wrong sides together. That means your, filtering, your filter material is sandwiched between. And then just surge around the outside of the circumference to finish the edge. Option one for the elastic is a lot like the shower cap model. So you can see the elastic on the inside of the bell cover. So you're going to start with the elastic set right against your finished edge. And you're going to anchor it down really good so you can stretch it as you sew. You're going to grab the back of the elastic and pull as you line up the elastic with the outside edge of the circumference of the circle. So when you let it go, it will automatically gather up. 
be sure that once you get all the way around, you backstitch over the ends of the elastic. It's really important to stretch out your elastic as you're sewing here so that it will stay tight against the bell of the instrument. Another option for elastic, which is a great option but does take a little bit longer, is to make a casing. So before you close up that hole that you turned the bell cover around through, you're going to stitch an additional circle a half an inch in from that outer edge. Then you're going to take your length of elastic and you're going to fish it through the opening and through the casing. You can use a safety pin to help you. For me, the appropriate length of the elastic is one half of the circumference of your circle. So there's a little bit of math involved. Stitch the ends of the elastic together through that little hole and then you're going to tuck it in and stitch the opening closed, being careful not to catch the elastic. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it helps you in your band and orchestra programs. Stay safe.